have two passions in life. One is the visual arts, and the other is science. And it was uh, at the beginning of the past year, I was horrified when my teenager daughter came to me and they told me, I don't like science. <laughs> I was shocked. I said, it's too boring, she said. I could not understand, because I always took science as the most entertaining subject one can learn. Because for me, science is everything but boring. You have, like, you have action, you have drama, comedy, horror, <laughs> romance, <laughs> mystery. You know, uh, see about mystery, like, uh, nobody knows yet why the North Pole of Saturn, and only the North Pole, has this weird hexagonal shape. Isn't this strange? It's supposed to be round, right? And the, these are the first high-resolution images that you see I just received from NASA yesterday. You know, that perhaps it was the way the, the science was presented to my daughter that failed to appeal to her. And they tried to see what are the learning tools that our kids have. Well, you learn it from school and mostly from you mothers, uh, from home and mothers, then school and the teachers, our textbooks, uh, the media, and the self-experience. Well, from home, apparently the fail read. Uh, school, media, and self-experience have very little, very little or no control at all. However, uh, I mean, being a visual creator, there is something I could do about the textbooks. I try to see, there's anything else wrong with textbooks? Like, let's see. Uh, when I was the age of my daughter, this is what a television set looked like. Uh, she, she, you are, when she was a kid, she was once seeing uh, ho some home videos and asked me, Papa, what is this box behind the TV? I said, dear, this was the TV. And the, the, the questions proceeded because she always understood that uh, this would be what on the TV today. When I was born, that's what a computer looked like. <laughs> and uh, when I was my daughter's age, that's a computer. And uh, today, a computer looked like that. <laughs> that every smartphone that all of you have in your pockets and your handbags have more procession power than the one that helped the man to land the moon. And think, thinking about that, this is what a textbook looked like when I was a kid in school. And that is what it looks now for my daughter. That's no mistake, it's a different slide. And that's a problem. And that's not acceptable. So my old way to how inspire my child to, to, uh, in science was to create a, a series of multimedia uh, science textbooks where I start with astronomy and physics, then later go to chemistry and uh, biology. Well, using a tablet as a media, I created this text cap that takes you on a journey from one subject to another. I was not trying to replace the paper book as the media, and I don't think that even is advisable. But uh, with the impressive resource that all of you have in your hands, you can do better to inspire and ignite the interest in the subject. On the uh, creative process, uh, I realized that you can represent everything visually and have analogies to make the learning simple. Uh, more connected to the daily life, the better. Uh, you see, you can learn. I believe that you can learn more about science. Uh, walking the streets or exploring your own home using a critical eye. Then you spend hours, days, trying to understand and decipher a formula. Everything can be visualized and connected in a better way. Uh, if you can uh, engage the child, on the learn, make the, the learning process enjoyable and uh, like playful, like playing a game or seeing a cartoon, that memory will really stick forever. Well, learning is to connect ideas, to present a, a, a complex, uh, a new element. You connect to what the child already recognizes to uh, a new element. And uh, it's the assembly of these past memories that are going to create you a new ideas. Uh, for example, when I wanted to talk about electromagnetic waves, I, I take them to the kitchen. And uh, we show, like, the, you learn about that, uh, seeing how, when a, a microwave and oven uh, is hitting their snack. And uh, after they uh, learn the concept and the principles of how it works, uh, we propose like an experiment. Like you can calculate the 
the speed of light measuring uh, uh, melting cheese in a microwave oven. You can use a pizza too. <laughs> yeah. Then I give like the directions, you have the ingredients, and uh, you go for it. And this is a textbook. Okay. Measure the results and see that the pattern that's created by the heating and comparing with this, uh, the, the settings of your microwave, the, your oven, you can calculate the speed of light. It's cool. And uh, it's an experiment you can eat later. <laughs> mm? But uh, there's one thing. With it, all the subjects you want to have to learn in life, why is you, you have this emphasis on science? Because science is to understand the world around us. In this heavy technological world that you live in, it's so dependent of science. Can your mother afford to let your child handicap? Of course, you can't. It's a crazy world out there, and one needs to be curious and start as soon as possible. If, for example, you compare the internet with the human brain, uh, where well, you know, the internet has its links, you, the human brain has connections. Just, just pretend they are the same thing. Like, the internet has uh, roughly about 100 trillion connections. As adult brain, 300 trillion. And the child brain, an impressive one quadrillion. You know, how many zeros there's in one quadrillion? <laughs> no. At a young age, the kids has a natural sense of wonder and curiosity. And that is the moment that all these connections are going to be used at best. So, encourage your child to ask questions and to seek answers. Uh, why eating vegetables are good for you? Why the leaves are green? And uh, listen to their ideas and explanations. If you don't understand or you don't agree, go and search for that concept, that answers together. The question and the answer process is the learning <coughs> under the method of doing science. Uh, you have to avoid some negative uh, uh, statements such as, uh, I never liked the subjects when I was in school, I got my worst grades on that. This may be true, but it's not going to help you any. You have uh, read a lot of problems to deal with. For example, uh, uh, you know that science itself has image problem. Life, do you hear me? Give my creation You see, science is still associated with the stereotype of the geek, the crazy scientist with the weird hair, with the white lab, that stay in the laboratory all day, totally detached of life. Show your kids how science can be used to solve real-world problems. Like, for example, bioengineer an enzyme that is going to clean an oil spill and save a pelican's life. Or creating the new generations of robots. What you're seeing here is a robot called Da Vinci. And uh, yes, Da Vinci can paint. But uh, the cool thing, he was not intended, he's not made with this purpose. He's a surgical robot. He's so, he has the capabilities to do uh, brain surgery. So, imagine what the kind of robots that your kids are going to produce, you are going to have at their world. Ask them what they think that they are like, your world is going to look like, and how you can make a difference on it. Because our whole world is changing at an incredible pace. Uh, was just uh, yesterday that you discovered uh, this material called graphene. And the graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms disposed in this honeycomb shape and is the strongest material on Earth. You are going to need an elephant balanced on a pencil to pierce a sheet of graphene of the thickness of up that you have in a kitchen. Then imagine what this material is going to make a difference in our futures and the futures of our kids. 
You know, Einstein also was asked, what inspired him to take a life on science? And he told that is when he's got his first compass. And so holding his hand, he was mesmerized, trying to understand what are these invisible forces that compel these needles to always point to the same direction? But what you inspire your child? Like, what you are going to be their compass? The world you live, the universe, is big. It's huge. It's so big that the human brain cannot understand the dimension of it. But the beauty of that, that the laws of physics that control it is the same everywhere, no matter where you are. And that you can find inspiration and encouragement about learning anywhere, in your kitchen, in your street, in your home, in your garden. You just need one thing, pay attention, be curious, look close and try to connect the dots and seek together what are the answers for that. This universe that you live is beautiful and try to understand it is supposed to be fun. Thank you.